Good evening, everyone. It's uh, it's uh, Principal James Bonham Carter here. Looks like we've got about 53 people online at this point, and we're starting uh, in about one minute. And uh, I'll just be doing a brief introduction uh, to myself and the school, and then uh, we'll turn things over to our head of guidance, Daniel Lond, who will take you through tonight's presentation. Just to let you know, there is a Q&A function um, on this event. It's a live event, so it's less interactive than a, than a regular um, a regular sort of online meeting. Uh, it's more like a show or a presentation, but there is that functionality, and we're hoping you can find that. And if you've got questions, you can you can send those in on a chat function. So it's my, my pleasure to uh, welcome you and uh, maybe your son or daughter uh, to your journey of coming to high school uh, this evening. And typically we would do this event at the school and you'd have an opportunity to come in and uh, take a short uh, tour around and, and meet some of the teachers and we'd meet up in the library and we'd talk to you all about um, all the exciting things that uh, uh, school high school has in store for you. And uh, it's fun because it's uh, it's quite often a really exciting time, and you can you can see how nervous people are. And uh, one of the things that I always say is uh, it's just the beginning of a really great chapter in your life, and um, and we're here to make sure that's the case. Uh, Frontenac is a school. I've I've had the pleasure of uh, being the principal here just in September, uh, but uh, up until a couple of years ago, I was the vice principal here for six years. Uh, so I really know the school well and I know the staff and I'm very, very confident uh, that it's an excellent place to come to, to, to school and to work every day. Uh, prior to that, it was, I was a teacher uh, here in the past as well. Um, so I'm a little bit biased when I tell you that it is absolutely the best school in the district um, for so many reasons. Um, probably the biggest uh, reason is uh, the students and it's, it's the decisions they make every day in their classrooms and in the hallways and on the sports fields and on the stage uh, or wherever they may be uh, that make the school so great. Um, they understand that um, if you want to have a great school to come to every day, you've got to contribute to that. And so those individual, in, individual decisions make all the difference. I would say um, our staff is another, another great thing um, that, that make the school are, uh, as, as, um, as good as it is. Uh, they're they're very caring. Uh, they're very committed, and um, they're really focused on individual student needs, as well as uh, just helping everybody uh, achieve their best, which is our motto: striving to be our best. So, um, while today is just uh, the introduction, I, I I would like to encourage you uh, as you embark on this journey of um, learning about schools and and picking a high school uh, to reach out to us um, if you have any questions at all. And, and I'm hoping as things become a bit more normal uh, between now and September uh, that we'll have a chance to have you here in the school and, and uh, really get a chance to look around. So I'm going to turn things over to uh, Mr. Daniel Lalonde, who is our head of guidance, and he's going to lead you through the presentation. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us this evening. Good evening, everyone. I, uh, I want to give you a uh, I want to say hi. I'm, I'm uh, head of student services here and I'll be uh, talking to you tonight. I'll give you the broad overview about what it means to come to high school and try to touch on all the all the questions you may already have in your in your mind. Um, I'll have some time at I'll take some time at the end to answer your questions. There is a there is a Q&A function and if you uh, are in Teams you see a little bubble with a question mark in it. If you click there and uh, and type a question you should be able to see other questions that are there. Uh, what you might want to do as well is maybe scroll through and see if somebody else has already asked your question. I want to start by talking about the supports that we offer students. Um, aside from the principal and vice principal, when I was a kid you went to the vice principal's office when you're in trouble. That's not so much the case. There's lots of reasons why the vice principals are here to play a supportive role as well. Your classroom teachers are frontline workers. They uh, during COVID, they're getting to know your students four hours a day, and uh, and so they build they build a, a quick relationship with them in terms of knowing what their what their strengths and weaknesses are, and uh, knowing the best parts of their day and that sort of thing. Uh, in student services, you'll meet traditional guidance counselors like like myself, and we support students by talking to them about uh, career planning and future planning, looking at timetable, and just about anything else that they feel that they they want to talk about. We have an adolescent care worker in the building 
who deals with the emotional care for our students, as well as a social worker who is here twice a week and uh, and counsels with students. Um, that's usually done on a, on a referral basis with uh, consent from parents. Our learning program specialist works with students who have uh, individual education plans. Someone's already asked the question about as a parent of a student with individual uh, education plan with an IEP, what should you know as your student is coming? Uh, the answer to that is that we uh, we will receive the IEP from the elementary school. We also go out and meet with teachers and principals at the elementary schools who are our feeder schools, and they share notes with us about students who are at risk, student uh, learning needs, and uh, we can then consult with with you as a parent and the child in terms of creating an atmosphere and um, a timetable that works for your student. We are often invited to attend uh, IPRC meetings. Those of you who have dealt with IEPs know that there's a what an IPRC meeting is, and we usually do that um, in 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 the spring, and so that's that's upcoming. So if you would like one of us at uh, at your at your IPRC when you're invited to that, uh, please make sure to let your elementary school know. In the building here, we also have a student success um, team. The student success team are to help students to be successful. And what that means is that if a student is missing assignments, um, we don't like you to use the word fail. It's, it's hard to fail a course. You have to basically not do anything at all. And, it, and, and the teacher then has a discretion to say that a, a credit in grade nine might be incomplete, which would mean that a student had missed an assignment or two. Or two. And in that case, the, the student success teacher would um, help that student complete that work. Aside from the rest of that team, we uh, we take advantage of community agencies who uh, will come in the building. We have uh, representatives from Kairos and and other agencies who come and, and counsel students here and and help us with things that uh, where where we need someone who has a little bit more expertise than we do. At all levels, we do our best to communicate with uh, parents um, and students, especially those who are struggling. If you have not yet downloaded the Messenger app, and you may have that if you're uh, you're uh, in the uh, Limestone board as a um, with a student in elementary school, you might already be using Messenger. I'm going to go to the website so you can see what I'm talking about. The Messenger system is an op is a, an app that we use to communicate things going on in the school. Uh, we might uh, we'll communicate inclement weather events. We will uh, you'll you'll get an alert if your student is missing from school and uh, and it's an all around just communication tool between the school, the school board and and parents. Our website, well, I got to get back to my other screen. Our website. Um, hang on, OK. <clears throat> Our website gets a lot of attention. Uh, both outside the building and inside the building with daily updates and uh, you can visit it often to see what's going on in the school and I'll, I'll, I'll click to there. So you can see today on the on our school website where uh, course selection opened up. Whoops, I got to share that with you. It's not sharing. Hold on a second. Yeah, so on our on our school website right now. Um, I'm having a technical problem here. OK, James, you can see. Can you see the website right now? Yes, I can. OK, so you can see on our school website uh, where today our course selection opened. And uh, so students can click there to to start picking their courses for next year. There is a calendar with upcoming dates. And so the website is a really healthy tool for for us to use in the school. For some reason, it's not popping back and forth to share properly. So I'll go back to my PowerPoint here. All right, and we're on Twitter. So if you want to be on Twitter, you can, uh, if you're on Twitter, you can share those as well. Uh, find information there as well. I'll tell you a little bit about the school day. Our national anthem plays at 815 with some announcements and uh, classes start at 820. A little different than some of the elementary schools. 
and we're done by 2.30. There's four periods in every, if we were in a typical semester, there were four periods in a day. Um, we're still treating it that way, even though students stay in the same class during, uh, during COVID. As you may know, we're in an octomester right now, so students have 22 days in the same class. Uh, we're not sure what will happen in September, so we're not predicting anything right now, but um, there's four periods in a day and there's a break between the, the first two periods and the second two periods with the lunch in the middle that's 55 minutes long. And uh, that's what our that's the breakdown of what our school day looks like. I want to get talking about uh, let's talk about some courses. And uh, one of the things that will happen and I'll tell you more about it a little bit later is that your students will be picking their classes in early January uh, for the following school year. In grade nine, students take some compulsory courses. They're listed there. English, math, geography, phys ed, science, and French, as well as some elective subjects. And you can see in the orange bubble there, uh, I explain that uh, students have to take an art credit somewhere in their high school career, and they should take a business or a tech class also somewhere in their uh, high school career. And so depending on the needs of the student, um, they may want a couple of art classes in grade nine and to take a tech in grade 10 or arrange things uh, differently that way. Certainly if a student has an IEP, we would we would use one of those. Uh, uh, there, there may be an opportunity for a resource period where they would get some support with a course that they're struggling in. In COVID, that's been made difficult, but we have uh, our learning support people sort of pulling people out of classes and, and offering support to teachers as necessary. One of the big differences you'll you'll uh, you may know about high school is that the courses are streamed and they're streamed into academic in grade nine and ten. They're streamed into academic, applied, locally developed, and open level courses. Um, a student in the academic stream may go on to post secondary destinations in college or university. At the applied level, uh, they may go on to uh, post secondary destinations in college. In grade 11 and 12, those academic and applied courses are called university, college, and mixed level courses. So an academic student might go on to then do university level courses in 11 and 12. Uh, an applied level student would go on to do college um, level courses. Both groups would do some mixed level courses and uh, locally developed students would transition into what are called workplace courses. It's probably too much to think about now, but to attend universities, to attend university, students would need six U or M level courses um, in their grade 12 year. And so that, that has some ramifications on what they take in grade 9, 10, and 11. The particular courses they need will depend on the program. There are some programs, for example, in universities where they won't need any sciences at all in grade 11 and 12. There's other programs where they would need some heavy arts programs in grade 11 and 12. So it varies quite a lot. Um, and then, and then, as students head off to community college, there are some require there may be some requirements in grade eleven and twelve in terms of uh, science, tech, or um, or computer classes, for example, that would affect a student's ability to get into a, a community college program. So, what does it mean to pick academic or applied? That, that's a question that that parents ask. Don't we want to leave all the doors open? So, aren't we best to take ac academic courses just to just to see what happens? It's a very tricky question. And I'll give you the best example is that if, if a student is in grade 12, for example, and they're getting 50s and 60s in their U level courses because they wanted to leave doors open, they've actually closed most of the doors available to them. They will likely not be able to get into a university with 50s and 60s in U level courses. Uh, and they will struggle to get into community college because community colleges are really more uh, interested in uh, in uh, the grade you have rather than the level or stream that you're in. So that's an important thing to recognize now. The, the, the same student earning 80s or 90s in a college level course would be able to go to any college program they want, so long as they have their prerequisite courses. Colleges also have degree program, degree programs. That may be different than when you uh, were going to high school. Colleges uh, like St. Lawrence and others have uh, university degrees in business and other, and other programs. The requirements often match university requirements, uh, but we're talking a long time from now, so it might not be something you need to think about right away. The most important thing to, 
to think about right now is where your student will be most successful and comfortable in grade nine. You can mix courses. So a student who isn't as good in math and sciences might do those at the applied level while they do English and geography at an academic level. This would be a student who is concentrating their grade 11 and 12 courses less towards the sciences and more towards social sciences, for example. Your best resource is probably your elementary teacher. You know, they may be of the mindset to keep doors open, but if you ask them to be really honest with you about their student's ability, they'll, they'll probably give you good guidance in terms of what kind of course to pick uh, at, headed into high school. Uh, typically, if a, if a student is achieving at provincial standards, that usually means an average of 70, 75 or higher, they're probably good at the academic level. And I won't say more than that, but if you had specific questions, you might uh, you might contact your elementary teacher or, or one of us at the, high, at the high school. And then locally developed classes are more hands-on, preparing students to go off to the world of work. And they translate, like I said, to workplace courses. And often at every, in every stream, um, we would encourage students to look at grade 11 and 12 uh, and think about a co-op uh, course. That's a placement in a, in a job that they might be interested in, either a, par a part time job that they're always wor already working on or somewhere like uh, in, a, in a trade or a bank or a restaurant. We have somebody right now at a co-op at a she wants to be a mortician. And so she's at a funeral home right now doing the co-op. It's a great opportunity for her moving forward as she heads off to, uh, to college to study that. We also have um, some enrichment opportunities at the high school. Um, an, an enrichment opportunity, as you might remember, is maybe a field trip or a, or a, or a club or um, an activity at a community college or university. Um, there are some in-class enrichment opportunities. We are a, a, a college board approved AP program. AP stands for Advanced Placement. And so we have courses nine to 12 that uh, offer students some AP enrichment in the classroom. So they'd be doing a, um, an Ontario curriculum math class, for example, and then receive some extra instruction and some extra activities to prepare them in upper grades to be taking AP exams. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about what that means. Um, a student taking an AP English exam, for example, would do that in grade 12. They might get a really good mark on that AP exam. Um, that's separate than what they were doing in high school. So they'd get their English credit, but they'd also write this exam and that might um, um, allow them to not take English in their first year of university or not take calculus in their first year of university, depending on the university and the, and the, and the situation. So there's a lot of variables in there. Uh, the most important thing to think about is, 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 is my student easily bored? Is, are they a high achieving student? who is easily bored and would they benefit from uh, some AP classes that, that we have available to them. I'll talk to if we were if we were all together um, in the building tonight, uh, Madame Miles would take all the uh, immersion and extended students and their parents to a different room and outline some of this. So I'll spend a couple minutes with you now. Uh, telling you a little bit about what extended French and immersion French looks like at the high school. Essentially, at the end of high school, the goal is to have an extended French certificate or an immersion French certificate. And on this slide, I've listed the various courses available throughout high school. On that certificate, that certificate would include four French credits, one in each grade, like uh, French language courses, one in each grade, along with opportunities to take Géographie, Mathématiques, uh, histoire, carrière et civilité, musique and éducation physique. And we have those, some, so history is in grade 10, geography is in grade nine. Uh, careers and civics is a course that all grade 10s have to take. We offer a French version of that for our extended and immersion students. And, uh, and then we also have uh, offered a, a musique program. Many of our um, immersion and extended students are already doing band classes so that when they transition to nine and 10, it's good for them to continue studying music and French. And so that's an opportunity for them as well. We also offer uh, physical education courses nine through 12 in, in French. So the goal is uh, for extended students to take seven credits 
and for immersion students to take 10 credits. And if you have other questions, I'll be posting some information later, including Madame Miles' email. So if, if you have specific questions about immersion and extended, you can, you can uh, message her and she'd be glad to answer you. Uh, the goal of high school is to graduate with a diploma. And uh, what you will need for that is 30 credits. Uh, you'll need to write the grade 10 literacy test and earn 40 volunteer hours. Those community service hours can begin as soon as they finish grade, as soon as a student finishes grade eight. So something they might do in the, in the coming summer uh, would count. Now, because of COVID over the last couple of years, the, the government has changed some of those rules for our graduating students. So it's hard to tell what it'll look like coming, coming up in the future. It's likely with, uh, with the vaccine coming along that uh, your student will, will be able to accumulate those 40 hours in the, in the course of their high school career. Uh, those 30 credits look like 18 compulsory credits and 12 electives. And I'll, uh, the next slide, I'll tell you a little bit about that. In high school, students earn uh, an English credit in each grade. That's a core English credit. One of the really exciting things is that in grade 11, all of our students taking, take a course called Aboriginal Voices. And so instead of studying Shakespeare and other, uh, what I like to call dead white guys, uh, they will study Indigenous authors and Indigenous writers. And so that's an exciting uh, grade 11 course that we have available. In grade nine, all of our students take who are taking visual arts do a Native arts class and, and again have, have exposure to Native culture.